a regular uh, position as the number one goalkeeper for Ashanti Gold. But Nanya FC captain, former Nanya FC captain Lawrence Latte is starting today. Ernest Kwachu, formerly of Accra Good Olympics, is also in the fray today. As well as Luis Quenu, who's just switched camp from Kumase Asante Kotoko. DJ Kore is uh, looking to bang in uh, some goals today to keep the uh, pace as number one in terms of the goal king chart for Ashanti Gold. And Latif Mohamed will have a lot of support from Yakubu Mohamed. jerseys against Ashanti Gold who are also their traditional yellow uh, yellow jerseys that is over black shorts and uh, it's time for them uh, to say prayers the crowd I must say sadly not here present at the Accra Sports Stadium for this home match of uh, To Do Mighty Jets but of course there are dotted fans or there are fans dotted around uh, the various uh, sections of uh, the stand and uh, of course they'll be here and they'll be cheering on there's a drumming or a singing group uh, somewhere in the uh, stands and they are the fans of uh, to do mighty jets the home side they were not too pleased with uh, the last score line the one one draw with the uh, heart of lions and so mighty jets will be looking forward to appease their fans today for the three maximum points at stake let's see how they do that against the solid ashanti gold side this afternoon they are coached by a uh, former Black Star International, former Ashanti Gold player in the person of uh, Yawa Chiampong. And uh, he's ably assisted this afternoon on the bench by Kamara Dini, also a former national uh, star. And uh, it's good to see Amate Ama, the man they know, or the man all but all everybody knows, I beg your pardon, as uh, Saikochi. He's still on the bench for Ash Gold. He's their physiotherapist. And on the bench for Tudu Mighty Jets is uh, Fostal Hassan, who will be steering a first from the dugout as the referee blows his whistle away. We go for the commencement of this match this afternoon here at the Accra Sports Stadium. It's Tudu Mighty Jets who are playing from left to right. And Ashanti Gold are defending the independent square end of the field. Ash Gold, that is the first incursion into the 18 of to do mighty jets is a strong run there but a hot chase and a solid tackle coming in and that is Ashanti Gold announcing their presence with Ernest Fortune's kick going wide so for Ashanti Gold they have really given indication of what kind of business they want to perform here at the Accra Sports Stadium and let's see if at the end of 90 they will stand tall that's a goal kick advantage uh, and it's kicked in straight away it's a long one in Dealt with in midfield by to do mighty jets away they go on the far side this is Abubakar City Sofiao and Ernest Kochu with a clearance Ernest Kochu switching come from Accra Grand Olympics to Ashanti Gold is a very solid defender Ernest Kochu as uh, Adam Smoru lays on one for to do mighty jets he wins the first no he doesn't win the first corner kick my mouth was running a bit too fast mighty jets coming up with an opportunity storm has been uh, weathered and it's Ash Gold who turned defense into attack on the near side. It's Latif Mohammed. He lays on the pass. And there's a good run. Can Moro get to it? Nana Fuku that was. It's picked up by Mohammed Sinairi. And to the Mighty Jets get the game underway. And uh, we've seen early indications from both sides. But of course, looking much more potent was the attack by Ash Gold. Eric Opoku losing the ball there, trying so very hard to get to it, he gets to it. Referee says play on, and he lays on the pass to DJ Kore. DJ lays on the pass, well read by the defense of Tudu Mighty Jet. Go have they, Inusa Musa. Timely clearance out of danger zone, all the way to the half of Ashanti Gold. And joining me in commentary position is uh, Albert Ababio. And Albert, we've seen just the first one or two minutes of this game, and it's given every indication of probably an interesting afternoon well it promises to be an end-to-end -end affair here Ashanti Gold themselves never afraid to attack their opponents whether they play home or away for Mighty Jets you know that that's how they start their games in a well worth fashion for the first 15 minutes they get a goal some of the times go to sleep particularly in the second half but over here they will find an Ashanti Gold a team that is confident on the ball we've seen Nana Poku and then Mohamed Latif together with Yakubu Mohamed or do some confident runs through the channels over here, although it's very, very early in this particular game, but I'm uh, expecting a very good game. 
Well, our best expectations are quite high. Let's see if the players on the field of play would match up to the standard as they come forward through Richmond in Kitia. Mohamed Sinari has been dispossessed by Titi Corrin. Midfield, he lays on the pass. And away come Ashanti Gold. Jakubu Mohamed gets into the picture. But back into the half of Ashanti Gold he goes to. They have scored some 18 goals so far, Ashanti Gold. Most of them coming from the boot of Jakubu Mohamed. And lots of support from that man, Titi Corrin. Ball comes to the near side, it comes with Captain Daniel Asamoa. Asamoa to a base, lays on the pass, and this is Didier Kore. Didier Kore's pass was intended for Latif Mohamed. Well read by the defense of uh, Tudu Mighty Jesse. Manuel Lai gets the ball away, he goes to the far side, and Isaac Clevo would announce his presence with that long pass. A telling one indeed, Abu Bakar Sidi just possessed on that occasion. Throw in advantage to the home side. only three minutes gone going on four and albeit sooner or later we might be seeing a goal in this match as to the mighty jets come forward Sinairi Mohamed based on the pass to Ganiyu Emmanuel Lai gets into it he comes to the far side and it's Adam Smoru Adam Smoru lays on the pass to the 18 yard box well worked by to the mighty jets they keep their composure as they keep their attack up Smoru brings it back and finds Rich Monikit here Cross sends it to the other side of the field. And Ashanti Gold will be called upon to defend. Emmanuel Lai gets his foot to it. But no, he's been dispossessed. It's picked up by Nanapoku. He's fallen deep to help with the uh, defensive duties. Lovely pass on there by Yakubu Mohamed. Nanapoku into the 18 yard box. He goes. He turns. He's still with Nanapoku. Can he get him the cross? He wins the first corner kick for Ashanti Gold. Poor play by Nanapoku. You struggle to understand why over here he didn't send in a cross or he didn't do the cutback because it was a 3v2 situation. They had the mighty just defending, uh, defenders backpedaling and he wanted, he dwelled on the ball too much and by the time he decided to effect the cross or the kick, the mighty just had a lot of men behind the ball eventually conceding a corner kick here. As the corner kick is swung in beautifully. And it's going to be another corner kick. Ball came off the head of Inusa Musa. Standing tall in his uh, defensive uh, ability. And from the replay again. Quite dangerous, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Inu Samusa. Ball is swung in again. This time it's headed out solidly by the same Inu Samusa. But it doesn't go too far. It's picked up by Asamoa. Asamoa to the near pass. We're going to see lots of combinations between Asamoa and Bernard Akoku as he sends in the cross. Well read by Mighty Jet. CD. Sinari gets his body in the way, but Asamoa will clear out. And so for Ash Gold, and uh, it's interesting, we have Lawrence Lasse, former captain of Nanya FC, standing in the heart of defense for Ashanti Gold. We all know his uh, capabilities. But then you also have Ernest Potu, who's also switched from a Kraken Olympic to um, Ashanti Gold. And so you realize that the regulars, like Henri Traoré, are all sitting on the bench this afternoon. Well, and again, it goes to prove the quality in the National Division 1 league. We've had some players coming through from the Division 1, and they've, been instant imp they've made instant impact. You can talk of Bafu, who now plays for Kumasiya San Chikoroko. And the two in the central defense have ensured that Angel does not get a regular position, and even Ashon also does not play. Luis Queen was also um, gotten from Kumasiya San Chikoroko, ensuring that, again, um, the Ivorian you mentioned also not playing this afternoon. And it's all in all, I think that Ashanti Gold have done some level of good recruitment and they brought together uh, good players who are now giving them the results here. And in the six minutes this game has lasted, you will not struggle to understand why they have won three games in the second round. They've won all three matches in the uh, second round uh, since it began. And that's a very good sign for Ashanti Gold. They beat Edubiati by two goals to one. They also beat Wasaman by two goals to nil. And uh, Accra Heart of Folks, Kofi Ejari gifted them with an own goal in that match played at the Lankley Stadium just last week. Abdul Ghaniyu, timely clearance by Kochu. Deep into the half of Mighty Jet. Good thinking on the pass of Inusa. Lays on the pass, cut. Sinai gets to it. No, he can't. Titi Kori gets there first. And so for the 
for, for the Ash Gold team, like uh, Albert rightly said, the likes of Henri Traoré is on the bench, not having a uh, foot in the game today. Malik Akungwa is also on the bench, comes with a lot of uh, experience. And uh, they also welcome back David Telfer, who was in the team and then uh, left, and uh, he's back. Of course, uh, one of uh, the, the young budding talent, if you remember him during the under-17 era of uh, coach David Duncan. So David Telf also starts from the bench this afternoon for a Chelsea goal. Meanwhile, in the, on the bench of uh, Tudu Mighty Jets, Kotai Blankson may be called upon to man the post should Titus Baden fall into any and call for troubles. But Stali Fumamuda is also on the bench, as well as Yaya Mubarak. And that's Yawa Champong. In your shot, uh, former Black Stars midfield general, defensive midfielder that was, also played for Ashanti Gold in his heyday. Luis Quenu clears out, finds Lawrence Lati, his pass doesn't go too far. Abdul Ghanil, he goes down from that tackle. Referee Cecil Flesher says uh, play on. And having spoken about uh, Cecil Flesher, this afternoon he is the man in charge. He's a FIFA referee based in Takrade and he's supported on lines one by Alex Ainin and on lines two by Isaac Ifa Tete, both class one assistant referees. Alex Enin coming from Koporidia and Isaac Ifatete from Insawam. Our fourth official is Koporidia based John Atikese and Kofi Sam from Cape Coast is our match commissioner. It's a free kick advantage coming the way of uh, to do mighty Jets. Let's see what happens out of this uh, free kick. It's going to be a long drive from Inusa Musa and it goes wide. Well, countless occasions we recount and analyze why the teams don't do it right from dead ball situations rather than speaking and praising them for converting set, set pieces swilly. It was always rising, not putting goalkeeper Fatal down under any sort of pressure whatsoever. An opportunity for Inu Samusa to have registered his second goal of the season and the first in this game for Tudu Mighty Jets. He's a chap who got the second goal uh, of the season for to do Mighty Jets in that uh, week two match they played against Akwa Hearts of Oak. They lost by two goals to one, but Inu Samusa was on the scoring sheet. Or should I say was on the score sheet. It's now the turn of Ashgo to move forward and this they will do slowly but surely as they work themselves out of uh, defense. Inusa under pressure. He does well to deal with it expertly. And Mighty Jets get themselves away from trouble. Rich morning, Ketia. Lovely chip forward by Emmanuel Lai, but there's nobody there to respond to that. And Escochu again with one of those long clearances back into the half of to do Mighty Jets. And it will be interesting to see how the back two of uh, Ernest Kochu and uh, Lawrence Lati turn out in this match. Of course, they've got lots of support on the far right uh, with Luis Quenu in attendance and on the left by their captain, Daniel Asamoa. Long ball in by Fatal Dauda with his regular white patch under his left eye. This is Adam Smoro. Manuel Lai joins the attack. Rich Monikitia looks up. He plays on the pass. It's a good one for Abubakar Sidi. Nothing really came out of that. And that flick by Nanafuku, very, very unnecessary on that occasion. He's gifted the ball to Tudu Mighty Jets as they move forward threateningly. And they're looking for the opening to drive in the shot. He still has the ball. He delays on it. And the ball has been taken away from him. Well, Didier Kore has done some winning of tackles here in this afternoon's game. Close to the center circle and then around his own goal area. And it gives Ashango the opportunity to launch attacks like these. Yakubu Mohamed laying on the pass with Anapoku. Coming up with an opportunity. That was good. Trying to use his physique and uh, making his presence felt in the 18-yard box. But on that occasion, it just went wide. Well, we've seen As Ashango play some intelligent balls through the channels. And over here, that's one such ball that found Nanapoku. He's always wanted to take matters into his own hands. Yes, I believe that for strikers, you need to have some level of um, selfishness ingrained in your, in your game. 
but you get into stretch positions and I think that the options that are open to you only have to take the one that will result in a possible goal and I think on that occasion they didn't do that. Clever lays on the pass, there's a chance coming up for Tudu Mighty Jesse lays on the pass, the shot is not forthcoming and Ash Gold will pick up the pieces. Good work done by Latif Mohammed. He kicks the ball out for Richmond in Ketia to receive uh, some attention going down from that uh, tackle and uh, Cecil Flesher will call for the first aid. Take a look at it again from uh, the replay. There's a strong tackle coming in from uh, Latif Mohammed Richmond in Ketia. Down he went. I don't know whether he was uh, clipped in the process. And so it will be a free kick advantage to Ash Gold and Kamaradini sharing a point or two with uh, Nanapoku. He acknowledges uh, the instructions coming from uh, his assistant coach. And Richmond Ketia limps uh, off the here field. Game will continue and momentarily to the mighty just will play 10 against 11. So Isaac Owusu sportingly gives the ball back to uh, Ash Gold. It's all about fair play. And so Daniel Asamoah would initiate an attack for Ash Gold. Finds Latif Mohammed. Under pressure. And as Samoa kicks the ball out into touch for a throw in, quickly affected by Tudu Mighty Jet. Ball comes to Imano Lai. He lays on the pass. That's a good one. But the last touch from Abdul Ghani lets him down. Ash goes slowly but surely. They work themselves out of trouble. But they've given the ball away again. So the pressure is going to be back on the minus. It's another throw in. Extent of play. We've done 15 minutes in the first half. If you've just joined us, this is action from the Ghana Globe Premier League where to do mighty just this afternoon are taking on a shanty goal. Mohamed Sinari puts up, says the referee, right in front of uh, his uh, eagle eyes. And Mohamed Sinari being penalized for that put up. Quite dangerous play. Low kick in by Lawrence Latte. This field here at the Accra Sports Stadium seems to be a very happy hunting ground for Lawrence Latte. As captain of Nanya, he managed to lead his team to glory last season in the MTN FA Cup, which uh, Nanya FC won, beating the Porcupine Warriors, Kumatia Santi Kotoko, by a goal to nil. And it was Lawrence Latte who lifted the trophy on behalf of his colleagues for Nanya FC. Don't forget, Nanya FC owned by the maestro himself, Abedi Ayu Pele opted not to go into Africa and I guess for him it may have been the right decision taking a look at uh, a few issues that came up prior to their preparations towards their third journey to Africa. So Lawrence Latte finds himself uh, in the mining city of Obuasi where he's continuing his uh, God-given uh, trade and talent. Such a good defender Lawrence Latte. And Espochu finds the man I've been talking about a minute ago. Long kick in by Lawrence Latte. Getting a foot in there was Yakubu Mohamed. Not that effective. Sinai Mohamed takes it over. And the subs will look on with rapt attention. To the far side it goes and Clever's pass a bit too strong. Obviously Tamim Mumuntari can't get to the ball. So after the first few minutes, I'll bet it looks like uh, the, uh, the gusto that the game started with has uh, died down and uh, dwindled a little bit. I, 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 I agree with you. I, I think that the weather conditions here has been very warm this afternoon. But even that, it is mighty just who, who are struggling in this particular game. In previous games we've covered, we've seen them I mean, able to pump balls up up the field, especially utilize the pace and the width that um, Ellie gives them on the left side and then even uh, Isaac Owusu also through the middle but it's not happened today because Ashanti Go are letting it become very difficult for them to play set balls. On the other hand, Ashanti Go themselves aren't using the possession they are winning here to an advantage and it's all played in 
the, le the tempo of the game going down a bit. Lovely through pass there by Abdul Ghani. But uh, Fatal Dada was quick to react. And he has to kick the ball out because Eric Opoku is down in pain. And that was a strong tackle that came in earlier on. And uh, that was when uh, Eric Opoku picked up uh, the injury. And uh, Abdul Ghaniu was just about to lay that pass. That went straight to Fatal Dauda. Foster Al Hassan, good work is done for Tudu Mighty Jets so far. They occupy the 13th position on the lock, 20 points they have amassed. They have managed to score a total of 14 goals so far, Tudu Mighty Jets. And they have Abubakar Sidi to thank for. He's got four goals out of the lot so far. Emmanuel Lai has three, and Tamim Muntari has two. And so they're counting on these three players to the Mighty Jets to pull the chestnut out of the blazing fire should there be the need. Sinairi, he has uh, blossomed into a very good player, Mohamed Sinairi, from the Unistar Academy, the Unistar Soccer Academy. Which is based in uh, Odupongo Fako. And uh, together with uh, his colleague, Benjamin Eli Agbeko, he's added a lot of uh, brightness to the game of uh, Tudu Mighty Jets. Of course, Eli Agbeko is uh, not on the bench, neither is he starting the match this afternoon. Ball's gone to the far side. Luis Quino brings the ball down, plays the 1 2 with Bernard Ekufu. It goes back to Lawrence Lati. Bernard Ekufu lays on the pass. That's a good one to Yakubu Mohamed. Latif Mohamed and Anapuku are waiting in the 18 yard box. Ash Gold come away with a throw in. Well, I've seen some casual play from Mighty Jets um, Isaac Owusu. Clearly, he didn't have his eyes focused on giving a good pass, which resulted in Asan Gold breaking up the attack and then keeping the pressure on Mighty Jets. Long kick in by Emmanuel Lies. One against two. Ernest Pochu does well to deal with it. And a strong tackle coming in there. Referee gives the corner kick. Appeals for a penalty. And Cecil Flesher would have nothing to do with that. Enu Samusa is claiming that Nana Poku took a dive. Yakubu Mohamed, I beg your pardon. Well, it doesn't seem to me that um, there was a touch of the ball by Enusa. And it doesn't seem to me that there was enough contact for Yakubu Mohamed to go down. I mean, and visit the turf in the manner he did. But eventually the referee whistling for a corner kick. I think that there was no contact whatsoever to the ball by Nu on that occasion for a corner kick to be effected. Well, the corner kick to the near post. Nobody really attacking the ball from Mighty Jets. But eventually the goalkeeper bade in taking up the matters into his own hands and punching that into safety. Asan Good will keep the pressure on them. And that has been the weakness with uh, Mighty Jets this afternoon. Getting the second ball. And as we see Ashanti Gold also casually losing out here as Mighty Jets break with some purpose. And ball comes to the near side. Sorry about that, Albert. And it comes to what? Uh, and the cross was on. It was a thick one, though, from uh, Adams Moro. Yes, this afternoon seem to be struggling in all departments and Gary Asmith mentioned that it is one game that they are going to be exposed particularly all around the, the, the field and it's clearly played out here. We've spoken consistently about the quality they have in um, Isaac uh, uh, Kofi Owusu for instance up front but in this particular game he's not had that luxury. CD the same thing for him and then the two play um, Scenario of um, Abubakari has also struggled to impose himself in this particular game. But for Hassan Scott, it is as good as you taking advantage of the difficulties your opponent has. If they don't do so, then the scoreline will be as we see 0 0. They only pick a point from this game. Well, obviously, to the Mighty Jets would, uh, would want to enrich themselves, if I should say that, with uh, the three maximum points at stake. 
they obviously would have to uh, bang in the goals in this match. So far, so good for them. They're keeping their eye on the ball collectively. They're making incursions into the Ash Gold uh, area. And Mohamed Sinairi with another attack. This is Abdul Ghaniu. He fires and it goes off target. But that was good enough. At least they're getting the shot uh, towards the goal. And uh, let's see if uh, that uh, would continue with some amount of uh, persistence from uh, Tudu Mighty Jets. Again, we take you through the replay. And good ball control by Abdul Ghani on that occasion. But unfortunately, his foot went too much underneath uh, the ball, way underneath the ball. And the shot kept rising and rising. Imano Lai, another attack for Ashgold this time. Dealt it on the far side by Lawrence Lati. He clears out. Good job done. Ashgold move forward slowly through Luis Quenu. Imano Lai picks it up in his own half. He goes down from that trip from uh, Didier Corey. And uh, it's going to be a free kick advantage to Mighty Jets. Imano Lai again going down on that uh, occasion from Didier Corey's tackle. And the game will continue slowly but surely to the Mighty Jets coming forward. Mohamed Sinari getting into the pick of affairs. That ball has been taken away from them easily and expertly by Eric Opoku. Lays on the pass and finds DK Kore. Asamoah will find the Ernest Potu in defense. And at this stage, it's Ashgold who are trying to get an opening in the setup of uh, Tudu Mighty Jets to move forward. Inusa has other ideas. He lays on uh, the header pass to Adam Smoru. But Richmond in Ketia. Not as quick enough as uh, for two. Didier Corey chests the ball down to Danela Samoa. He boots it to the far side. Nana Poku running after it. But who gets there first? It's Tami Mumuntari. He picks up the ball. It's one. Tami Mumuntari still coming through. Lays on the pass. Abdul Ganiu straight to Tami Mumuntari. Can he get to the ball? Patao Dauda to the rescue. Well, the first time Mighty Jets in this game have put a chance to go down. some real pressure. And it all started with the left fullback. I mean, doing that. Daisy run coming through, no pressure whatsoever put on him. Consistently, we've seen Didier Corey, the gentleman who is encouraged to go into tackles, but over here it was a very good pass through the channel. Goalkeeper coming out to grab it before any danger could be done. And for me, that's the first time that the pair of Kochu and Latte have had their so impregnable wall in front of Mighty Jets seemingly broken. Well, that should give Mighty Jets some hope if they've been able to go around Ernest Pochu and uh, Lawrence Latte. But they had that opportunity and uh, missed it. Ash Gold with a free kick. On the far side is Luis Quenu. He sends it into the half of Tudu Mighty Jets. And the shot is driven from afar. Quite a good opportunity for Ash Gold, and I thought that he was going to come forward. And unfortunately, he decided to go for glory. And on that occasion, they really let him down. Well, that was a poor decision by him. I, I, I mean, you look at the players in an attacking position and you feel that he is going to use any of the options that were open to him. And apart from the first few minutes where Asan Good were brilliant in playing the balls through the channel. Well, this is Abubakar uh, Sinairi. I beg your pardon, that was uh, Abubakar Sidi. Yeah. He came back with a brilliant opportunity of working his way into the heart of defense. See if he can catch the two players you mentioned earlier on the break. I think that was good enough on this part.